Hi, good evening. So I wanted to talk about a topic I haven't seen a lot in various YouTube videos when it comes to crystals in healing and magic. And uh, what I wanted to talk about is um, um, laboratory grown stones. Now what I'm talking about is not artificial stones because they do have the chemical composition of the minerals but they are not grown by nature, they are grown in a laboratory by various forms of methods so let me see, I have one here I'm not sure if my camera will pick it up yeah, it might be fine, there we go this is a sapphire a little sapphire lens actually I got it from my fiance and uh, yeah this is um, has the chemical composition of any sapphire but it's not digged out of a mountain it's grown in a vat or however then I make these so um, I've used a few um, uh, man-made stones, I like to call them frankenstones, in my ritual and also healing practice. And I've gotten somewhat good results from them. In my experience, such stones tend to have a very... A what? How should I describe it? Are any of you fans of musicals or classical music? In which case, um, do you listen to a singer named Sarah Brightman? If you listen to her sing, she has a crystal clear, perfect voice, but her voice is almost too perfect. It has no impurities, no personality if you want. No, I apologize for any fans of hers I might have upset by this, and I do like listening to her, and she's extremely skilled, but her, her voice sort of lacks personality. And I would say the same with the Frankenstones. They often have very clear, very precise energy, but they uh, they lack the personality that mother nature gives stones that are grown in the ground. Now I do understand that from a pagan or a naturalistic point of view that frankenstones might not be um, desirable. So uh, yeah, and if you don't want to use these kinds of minerals then that's completely up to you. But to me, I found that using these frankenstones, I've been able to use minerals in uh, sizes that I wouldn't otherwise be able to afford. For example, I have a um, um, ruby um, wand, which is about, um, let me see, this long? A long tin wand, and it's pure perfect ruby and I would never have been able to afford that if it had come from the ground but since it's um, that grown I can afford it so yes I would prefer natural grown stones but when I can't afford a given stone in a natural format, this is particularly gemstones um, because it's generally diamond, ruby, sapphire, those kind of stones that are made this way because they are also used in various forms of technology and is therefore made and mass produced and you can get them pretty cheaply and since they actually have the chemical composition of the natural stones they aren't so much um, fakes as they are frankenstones 
Anyway, I wanted to make this video to ask if anybody else uses these flat grown stones and if so, what your experience with them are. I, uh, like I said, I found that they have a very clear energy, they are very, a very uncomplicated energy, but they lack personality. I've also found that they are easy to program with energy, like uh, putting in, um, they're easy to enchant, and they are like sponges, and uh, are very easy to um, affect by moods, with spells, with energy, on both, um, and this is about a positive and a negative quality, but because on one hand they are easy to bend to your purposes, but at the same time they can easily uh, pick up some energy you don't really want for your work and be a pain in the ass. So yes, I know some pagans wouldn't touch um, a grown stones with a 10 foot pole and consider them to be unnatural and I do get that point because as a crystal healer it's not so much the chemical composition of a stone that do the work I think it's the energies inside the stone and um, I wonder what how much of the energies are inside a stone which has been grown in a laboratory but at the same time what do we know what chemical compositions really are? Perhaps they are just physical representations of energy. So, um, yes. I've worked with artificial ruby and artificial sapphire and artificial um, rock crystal. By artificial I mean these, these frankenstones. So I have a ruby um, wand, and I'm very happy with it. It has a very clear, very sharp energy. It um, it's good for healing work and for picking up. Like uh, me and my hubby, um, sometimes um, do this exercise where he, for example, brings the stones the stone to the store and um, then um, picks up an item, holds it, focuses on it and then tries to send that energy to the stone and I try to read it from the stone later and I've had some success with that so it's very programmable so I love my um, frankenstone uh, ruby I also have a frankenstone ruby in a gold ring, so that's more for decoration than magic. And I have this new little sapphire, which I haven't really started working with yet. We just felt on its energy, and there's definitely energy there, but it's a bit off. I put it in my hands, and I sort of felt these black... Um, tendrils coming from it. So I think it needs a long good cleanse. But other than that I'm looking forward to getting to know this stone. And I also have a nice um, quartz disc which is very clear and I use that to represent the moon during, uh, during my um, uh, full moon and uh, dark moon rituals. So yeah, I um, don't really know what more to say about the topic. It's just meant to be a quick video, uh, both to tell of my experience with Frankenstones and also to ask if anybody else has any experience with it. If you do, can you please comment or send a video response, because this is a topic I haven't seen discussed a lot and which I think is really interesting. Um, 
I want to learn more about and what better way to learn about it than having a good talk about it. So yes, have a great day and blessed be.